A little disclaimer on today's video, I am not a fashionista. I don't claim to be. I've always felt like I was struggling a little bit with my attire and some women just love this stuff. They know all the brands, they know the latest styles, they pull it all together, they love talking about it. I am not that girl, I'm more of the girl next door. That being said, I do love to wear dresses and actually heels more and more. And the last video I did, I was wearing several different dresses and high heels and I got so many comments. I even, I went to um, Boston the following week and did a whole retreat with a bunch of my design students. And I even got asked on that retreat, now do you really wear dresses every day? And the truth is, yes, I do. And I love them. I think they're so feminine. They, they only require basically one decision because it's one piece of clothing and then some shoes. And so I like the simplicity of it and my closet is just being converted more and more. I'm down to one pair of jeans and I don't know how long those are even gonna stick around. And here's the backstory, okay? In January, I decided to go to finishing school. Oh, I know. It was a finishing school on YouTube, of all things, of course. And I took it because I wanted to be better at speaking. I wanted to understand how to pronounce things better. I wanted to hold my own in high-end restaurants and settings when I'm talking with really super professional people. And I just wanted to know more about that world and leveling up. And you know, you can take it as far as you want, but at least now you know if you're doing things right or wrong, how to get in and out of a car, I, how to um, introduce yourself well, like what's the proper way to hand your business card to someone. I don't know, this stuff's kind of interesting. So I got sucked into the vortex and I took the finishing school course. I think it was eight weeks long. And one of the first things that I was taught is that when you shop for your clothes, you want natural fibers. So that means silk, it means cashmere, cotton, linen, wool, and you are changing your wardrobe over to all these beautiful natural fibers. That brings me to today's sponsor for this video. I don't know if you've heard of Lily Silk before, but they have a whole line of beautiful, beautiful silk clothing. And so thank you Lily Silk for sponsoring today's video. I want to share with you some of my latest finds. They come in these beautiful boxes that just make it feel like Christmas. Unpacking these presents was a real treat, a surprise. I didn't realize that they put so much into their packaging, but I love companies like that. And I pulled out these gorgeous pieces of clothing. I couldn't believe how well they were made. They're heavy compared to other silks that I've bought. I've tried other silks. They feel cheap. They get wrinkled really fast. I'm more and more interested in investing in pieces like this so that, you, that I don't have to replace. And I chose this beautiful butterscotch color. I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of a caramely butterscotch. It has a little bit of an orangey undertone to it with this tie waist and the uh, ruffle collar here. And it even has pockets. Okay, the second one is this beautiful halter top. Look at that. I love how it ties in the back. I'm going to show you a few different versions here. So this would be the more casual look. So hair up, a little bit of tassel earrings. I have capri white jeans on. So to dress this one up, you could add a blazer and some navy heels. Then this pleated skirt was so beautiful. The way you wear it is it's kind of off center, which I really liked. So the front half of it, it has tiny pleats and then the other half on the front has wide pleats. I just thought it was really interesting. Really beautiful skirt with a slit in the front 
and I paired that with this striped button down. I'm really excited about this, actually this button down. I didn't pick this one out, they sent it to me and I just have had so much fun layering it and adding different jackets with it and I think it's gonna be such a good staple piece. Lily Silk is 100% pure natural mulberry silk. It has this 6A certification, which I didn't realize was the highest quality. And it's super nice for your skin and even your hair. I also got silk pillowcases. And they have an anti-aging effect because your skin slides more smoothly on it at night. And your hair is less frizzy in the morning. So I'm actually going to let my daughter use these pillowcases for her skin and hair. Mulberry trees use a lot less water than say growing cotton and it doesn't require any pesticides. Lily Silk uses as many scraps as possible to make small things so they'll make scrunchies or they'll make eye masks with the extra scraps taken from their clothing items and bedding. And they're part of a program called TerraCycle that recycles silk and cashmere items into other clothing products. If you are interested in investing in some of these products for yourself, I have a coupon code that I will share or you can grab it in the description box below. So you already saw a little peek into my daughter's space, but we have a third daughter that moved back home recently and we had to really get creative in this small space area that I have my three girls staying in. And it used to be two very small rooms. That's a, that's a problem in old houses oftentimes is you have very small spaces. And so it was two small rooms. Someone before us took out the wall. So now it's two small rooms right next to each other. And we have to make it cozy and beautiful and functional for three college age girls. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that we did and also let you in on a little secret about me. I love small spaces. They kind of stressed me out in the beginning, but I always am like, ooh, let me at it. I just want to figure out how to beat the system. And I love the challenge of small spaces. A great way to learn about decorating small spaces is to really study RV makeovers and tiny houses. I mean, I've seen entire nurseries designed into a closet space, things like that. I mean, that just like blows my mind. How do they pull this off? But I also love the genius storage hacks. So here's four things that, that helped us figure out this space and it can help you maximize all of your square footage in your space too. So number one, try to figure out how to use your furniture two, even three different ways. So for instance, this is my daughter Abby's bed and this room is probably about the size of a dorm room. And so I found this white leather day bed. So it acts like a couch and kids can study on it. And then of course it's her bed at night. There's also a trundle underneath and we can either use that for storage or my third daughter is actually using it at the moment. So pick pieces that give you a lot of mileage when you're making your furniture selections. Okay, then on the other side of this space is my daughter Madeline's room and we have this whole wall that's built in and we needed a spot for her to actually study. So we actually cut out underneath the counter and added in a spot where she could have a chair, right? And then the curtain is actually covering bins for storage. So look at all of your pieces and think, how can I get two to three uses out of this somehow? The next thing you're gonna do is think light and air, light and air, everything, light and air. And there's different ways you can accomplish this. So for instance, when it comes to your furniture, try not to allow extra mass, okay? So arms, not, none of that big puffy arm stuff going on. Arms are tight and low to the ground or even not even there. Okay, so I've got two chairs in the girls' rooms that are not armchairs. You do not wanna do armchairs if you're having a struggle with space. And then the backs of these chairs are really open so light and air can travel through. Parsons chairs are excellent for small spaces. Slipper chairs, both of these chairs I have in these styles I have in my own home. Or even acrylic can look good mixed in. Okay, then my other daughter's bed is actually a platform bed 
made out of pallets. So that's a trick with small spaces. You want things low to the ground so that you can have that light and air going around up above the bed. And this works really good in these spaces because we have the attic walls coming down and so headboards are an issue. In fact, I would skip headboards and footboards if at all possible if you're cramming a bed into a small space. So, okay, speaking of minimizing the extra bulk, you want round tables so even corners are taking up extra space. Legs on furniture, either no legs or you want legs that are just, you know, the peg legs from the mid-century modern. You want hairpin legs. Nothing too big and bulky for the legs. For my son's desk, his room is also small. We did a bar desk up on the wall, so no legs at all. In fact, the little hairpin pieces, brackets that are holding the butcher block are actually really decorative. They're not doing very much. Another way to get air and light, or the illusion, is to use mirrors. So both girls' rooms have mirrors in them. Then nightstands, <laughs> okay. Nightstands, uh, be careful in small spaces. So on one side, we have a shelf, little shelf unit with a record player, and we can move it each night when we pull the trundle out. So the nightstand is pretty portable. It's one of the biggest pieces of storage in that room. Then on the other side, my daughter doesn't even have a nightstand. She just uses the shelf created by the palette that's her headboard. But if you did want a nightstand, sticking with the whole like, no leg thing, you could do a shelf on the wall. You could actually hang it from the ceiling or have it may have a glass top on it so the light's traveling through it. For lamps, try to not have lampshades. Another thing you could do is use um, Edison bulbs. A lot of people want a big chandelier in a small space, and we do have, I mean, I have a pretty good pendant going on the one side that's glass. If you want a chandelier in a small space but you can't pull it off, I think rather than doing a flush mount light, you wanna do sconces. Get all the pretty detailing hanging off the lighting but just the small touches of it on the wall which brings me to my third point vertical storage vertical storage vertical storage so in a large space you can just spread it all out on that footprint do whatever you want with storage you don't have that op option in a small space your floor space is that real estate is at a premium so you've got to go up the walls if you can have a high ceiling in a small space you are definitely winning. But even if you don't have a tall ceiling, like these girls don't have a tall ceiling. But we did a lot of storage vertically. So shelves on the wall, backs of doors, yes, inside the door. So we have bulletin board for one gal. We have shoes hung inside the closet door that opens up. Um, shelving all the way to the ceiling. You could do hanging baskets. You could lean a ladder against the wall and do storage that way. And then the fourth thing I would suggest is using decorations as storage, which is maybe a no-brainer, but lots of baskets, right? So hide the stuff inside containers. I also love this clothing rack that gave us a little bit more storage space and we can just roll it in and it looks great. And speaking of small spaces and high fashion, guess who went to Boston this month? I've been waiting to share with you my trip to Boston. I did a retreat with some of my design students from my behind the scenes group, which is opening very soon. So I'll put a link below so you can you can uh, jump on the wait list if you're interested in learning more about that. So we've started doing these design retreats around the country and we always pair them with a major antique show going on. So I went to Bremfeld in Massachusetts and had the time of my life. Oh my word, the antiques on the East Coast are no comparison to what you can find on the West Coast. They're so much better. It was so much fun. I hauled two big suitcases of stuff home. I'm gonna share that with you. I'm gonna share my shopping, but here's a little sneak peek to get you ready for next week. I'm in Boston right now at, at the time of this recording. I gotta show you real quick. This is my teeny, teeny, tiny hotel room. I feel like it's about 50 square feet or something, but I mean, it did the job. Here's my little bed. I'm leaving now, I'm checking out, but I just couldn't believe how tiny it was. 
we'll go exploring in Boston because there's so much beauty and architecture to see. There's my, my tiny little mouse of a hotel room. At the light, turn right onto North Street, then take a slight right turn. Turn right onto North Street. It's funny to me how many people are using umbrellas. We just don't, we just don't care about that stuff in Seattle. It rains on us all the time. You just get so sick of being wet that, I don't know, you just, you don't have the patience for an umbrella. I think Boston is so, so beautiful. I keep gasping and holding my breath and gasping and holding my breath. So beautiful. I'm trying to show you the buildings. And then over here is Boston Commons. I'll try to go in there with you. All of the buildings are just so beautiful. All right, we're going into the Beacon Hill District. It's supposed to be the prettiest neighborhood in the country. Let's see what we got. shutters, the doors, the pillars. garden and I think we should go down to Boston Commons. Yeah. 